Essentialism by Greg McKeel. We live in an era of abundance. Now you have access to a very large amount of information, entertainment, opportunities, and that gives us a huge desire to want to be everything, to have everything, to do everything. And the problem is that this possibility in doing a bunch of things also reveals a big truth. We can't do everything. And no matter how many productivity techniques you master, it is humanly impossible for you to have everything that you desire, to live all the experiences that you would like to live, to watch all the movies and series, to read all the books, to have an athletic body, a millionaire career, and even if you manage to do all of that, you probably still wouldn't have the happiness that you think these achievements would be bringing to you. Whomever tries to be everything, to have everything, to do everything, ends up with a busy schedule with unimportant commitments, a house cluttered with unnecessary things, and mainly a mind filled with concerns that consumes all of your energy. Instead, you should have clarity on what you really want in life. You should focus only on what's essential and use all your energy to develop more and more these few things that bring you happiness and well-being. So in the book Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less, Greg McKeown explains exactly how you can concentrate on what's essential to put your energy in the right things. In today's Arata Kemi summary, we're going to see in detail what is essentialism and mainly how you can apply these ideas in practice in your life to reduce the amount of junk in your home, in your agenda, and in your mind. The essentialist's basic mentality is to know how to choose the right things and realizing the unimportance of almost everything. The fact that you live in an era of abundance where you can do basically everything doesn't mean that you should do everything. On the contrary, to avoid losing yourself in an ocean of tasks and unnecessary things, you need to learn how to choose what is really essential. Essentialism is a philosophy of life whose principle is to make you choose the right things and give up everything else that is unimportant. To summarize essentialism in three words, less but better. That doesn't mean doing less only for the sake of doing less. It actually means investing time and energy in the wisest way possible to give your maximum contribution doing only the essential. Only when you allow yourself to stop thinking to do everything and stop saying yes to everyone is when you can do your best on what's really important. In other words, you should do less but do better. The essentialist is the one that knows how to choose the right tasks to put in energy, giving up all the other unimportant tasks. The best way to do this is realizing that almost everything in your life isn't very important. Instead of wanting to do a little bit of everything, advancing very little in each direction, focus on choosing only one objective and put all of your energy in to advance on a large scale on that goal. This is a process of continuous improvement. At all times, you need to be asking yourself what is in fact essential in your life right now, knowing how to say no to everything else. If you say, I have to, then you're still far from essentialism. When you make your to-do list for the majority of the items, do you say, I have to, la 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 la, or I choose this and that? I have to go to a meeting. I have to go on a diet. I have to pay the bills. I have to binge watch that TV show. And lots of times we're so overloaded with to-do lists that we end up losing our ability to choose what we really want to do. Instead of choosing with clarity, we spend a good amount of our life reacting to events, doing what we need to do, what we have to do. It is as if we were trained puppies that respond in a certain way when we receive a specific command. And when you lose the ability, the capacity to choose what is really important, you're letting other people choose for you. And these other people are going to prioritize in your life what is actually important for them. Therefore, those that don't have clarity about the essential things, they end up occupying their own life with tasks that are priorities for other people. Things that are important for your boss, for advertisers, for influencers, for family, co-workers but not necessarily things that are important to you, except that you have to lose to win. Choosing what is important means giving up everything else. If you could go back to 1972 and choose a company to invest your money in, which company would you choose? 
General Electric, IBM, Intel. As a matter of fact, the company that would most profit would be Southwest Airlines. And airlines are usually not very profitable, but Southwest stood out from the rest by adopting essentialism as a business philosophy. In this case, Southwest identified that the essential for an airline company was to take the passenger from point A to point B. They chose to do only that with excellence, giving up all the extra services that an airline company tries to offer. Choosing to do only one thing and accepting losing all the rest can seem a bit boring, but this boredom can be good for you. Instead of filling all your minutes in your schedule with an endless list of things to do, leave space for boredom, for leisure, for reflection. These moments will help you to think, to be clear about what is really essential in your life. Great minds in history, like Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein, they understood the power of time and space to think. These two scientists used to set time aside to be alone, thinking, clarifying about which problems they should concentrate to solve. And today, many presidents of successful companies do the same. They purposely reserve time in their schedule to have time to reflect about what they're doing. These CEOs understand the benefits of being unavailable. And that way, they can escape from the endless stream of tasks to move away from the operational and have an overview on the problems that they have to face. You can do the same. If you're always dealing with small tasks, you can end up losing the notion of why you're doing all of this. Therefore, from time to time, set aside some space to stop and reflect on what you're doing, and mainly to clarify why you're doing all of this. Adopt your inner child's wisdom. Playing can awaken the most creative ideas. We're going to identify what is essential in your life. There is a tendency for you to cut out anything that is related to games and amusement and relaxation, but don't be committed to this error. Playing is essential to awaken your creativity and renovate your mind for the most challenging tasks. Playing helps your brain to re-establish new connections between ideas in a way that would never be considered before. The games can also help to fight stress, which is an evil aspect that can ruin your productivity. It is not by chance that big companies such as Google, Pixar or Twitter reserve physical spaces and time so that their employees can play. These companies know that when employees have fun, then they feel more inspired and also more productive compared to employees that only work. Besides playing, you should also reserve some time to rest. Sleeping the necessary hours to recover isn't a luxury, but it is something essential to protect you, your physical body, your intellectual patrimony. Sleeping well can increase your ability to think, to connect ideas, to produce better in less time. An extra hour of sleep can mean various hours of productivity the day after. Be ruthless to cut out everything that isn't essential in your life. And now that you understood the importance of focusing on what is actually essential, maybe you have certain difficulties in giving up what is not essential. Maybe when you start looking at your to-do list, your goals, or even your possessions, you might start to think that actually everything is important. Thinking that all your tasks and responsibilities are equally important is a very common trap. And the only way to escape from this trap is to have well-defined criteria to identify what is essential and what is not. A good criterion to be adopted is the 90% rule. For example, imagine that you are cleaning your wardrobe. And when you are in doubt whether you should discard or not a piece of clothing, you can ask yourself, from 0 to 100, what is the chance that I will want to use this again? If your answer is any number from 0 to 89, well, discard the piece. But don't make exceptions. The secret here is to define a criteria and be very harsh regarding the defined criteria. Another criteria is the yes, obviously. By that criteria, everything that isn't a yes, obviously, is a no, obviously. For example, imagine that you're practicing jogging because one day you thought that it would be good to do that in your life. Okay, so when you're reviewing that commitment, you probably ask yourself, is jogging really something essential in my life right now? If the answer isn't a yes, obviously, then it is a no, and the commitment of jogging should be discarded. Well, speaking like this might seem ruthless, but it's the most effective way for you to stick to what is essential. It was precisely because you were too flexible for wanting 
everything at the same time that you ended up assuming more commitments, more tasks, even more possessions that now you are having some difficult time to handle. Now it's time for you to step back and focus on what is essential. Learn how to say no to unimportant tasks. And after, plan carefully the essential tasks. To be an essentialist, you need to learn how to say no. An elegant no, but still a no. Discarding clothing or an individual commitment like jogging is relatively easy because it doesn't really involve other people. The challenge is way bigger when you need to discard commitments that are already confirmed with friends and family, co-workers. We are afraid of saying no. That's why Arata Academy has a training called How to Say No, which you can experience in arata.se forward slash how to say no. We are afraid of what others are going to think about us, or we simply don't want to disappoint others. And even so, saying no is necessary. If you don't learn how to say no, you will continue forever to assume responsibilities and priorities that aren't yours, but of others. Even if saying no will make you suffer for a few days, it's still better to suffer than saying yes to something that you don't really want and that will consume your time and energy for much longer. When you say yes to something that you don't want, you're wasting an opportunity to do other things that could be really important in your life. The most elegant way to say no is to separate your decision from the relationship that you have with that person. So instead of saying no in a dry manner with no explanations, you can call the person to talk and you can explain that uh, why you're saying no. You can show that you have all the priorities, clarifying that your time and your energy are limited and that you just can't assume one extra commitment. Earn time and energy by giving up commitments. Establishing limits gives you freedom. Beyond saying no to new commitments, you should also give up from commitments that were already established before and that just don't make any more sense nowadays. You can win a lot if you learn to reduce your loss and simply give up on what has already been passed. For example, let's say that you paid for an annual fee at the gym in advance. So now you feel stuck with this commitment, right? Even though you're doing gymnastics at this gym, it's not really pleasurable for you at all. This is called sunk cost bias. The sunk cost bias is the tendency to continue investing your time, money and energy in activities that you know that won't take you anywhere. It may seem that giving up some commitment in which you have invested so much is unwise, but the truth is that giving up what isn't essential, that's liberating. So back to our example, instead of wasting time and energy with this, why not just accept that you lost that money and just give up the gym. Why not invest in your time and your energy in a, another physical activity that really gives you pleasure and, and well-being for you? Giving up commitments means admitting your own mistakes and moving forward. If it's already clear that the commitment is not going to work, don't be afraid to shut down the commitment and stop your losses. But remember to at least learn from your mistakes. Trace limits to the new commitments. Don't look at the limits as restrictions, but see them as a tool to make your life simpler and focused on what is essential. Execute your tasks like an essentialist. Produce better by removing obstacles. Finding out what is essential and eliminating all the rest is only the first part of your journey in essentialism. After you clarify everything that is really important in your life, it is necessary that you execute your tasks that are considered to be essential. To produce better, you need to remove all the obstacles between you and your essential tasks. Pay attention to what you identify as really important and see what is preventing you today of doing that, of being that, or having all these essential items. And after removing the present obstacles, make a plan to prevent new obstacles from appearing. Don't fall into thinking that you're going to make a better plan just one time and it's going to be working nicely forever. Every week, you should take a look at your plan, at the execution. You have to identify what is working and what isn't. This is a process of continuous improvement and that will always keep you focused on what is essential. As soon as the essential works, transform everything that you can into routines. Giving up objectives, commitments and even material assets, that is a process. Now, don't think that everything will go well, that you'll get everything right the first time. It is very likely that you will make a few mistakes and that you will learn from these mistakes along your journey. But once you find something that works, do your best to transform these small victories into a routine, into something that can be repeated to exhaustion. 
For example, let's say that you've always struggled to eat well and to have a, a, a fitness in your body, a balanced weight. You already tried different diets, but they never actually worked out for you. But then you decided to focus on the essential, eating organic food, minimally processed food, and practicing physical exercise that is pleasurable for you. And once you find what works for you in your specific case, you have to transform that into a routine. Automate as much as you can. Reduce obstacles, detours, temptations. Avoid even trying to be finding new things on the internet or reading more books about other options. And when you transform a solution into a routine, you can free up time, mental space and energy to dedicate to other challenges. And these small victories create momentum, and that gives you confidence for you to reach other small victories. And with time, these small victories are going to accumulate and change gradually throughout time. Waiting for your life to change from night to day with only one decision is having too much hope in something that is very unlikely. Instead, you have to understand that the whole process is a gradual transformation. The person who wants to be everything, wants to have everything, to do everything, that person will gradually become an essentialist. It is a process with highs and lows, but it is sustainable in the long run. And with essentialism, you can have a simpler life. You can get out of that. You can reduce the amount of unnecessary stuff in your house and also worries in your head. With a much lighter life and focused on a small amount of smaller tasks, you will be able to focus on less activities to really give your best. Essentialism is a philosophy of life that can be translated into three words. Less but better. The book from Greg McKeon shows you how you can choose what you want to do. You have to understand the unimportance of almost everything and to give up on what is not important and then focus only on what is essential. And for that, you need to escape the unimportant task flow, to look at the real big picture and what really matters, and then select in a very limited way in what you're going to be investing, your time, your money, your energy. And this is a journey that will demand that you say no to commitments that are already assumed with other people, to new opportunities, and even to some of your old desires. And for those of you who want to discover how to say no in an elegant and also assertive way, I recorded a special class from the course How to Say No with three tips for you to learn how to finally communicate in an assertive, firm, and educated way. You can see the class right now by accessing arata.se forward slash how to say no.